Well, a very uh, good morning to you all. Uh, welcome uh, to St. John's Church this morning. It is my uh, delight and pleasure to be able to welcome you. Uh, my name is Mark. I'm the vicar here at the church, and uh, we look forward to our time together uh, as we meet together uh, to praise and worship our great and glorious God. Can I say a particular welcome if you're uh, newer to us at the church? I hope you feel uh, very much at home, or if you're uh, returning back to the church after a while away. It's uh, great to see you. And uh, great to have you with us uh, this morning. Well, we're going to uh, begin now with an opening prayer. And then we're going to have a call to worship. And then we're going to sing our, our opening uh, song together. So uh, let me uh, begin uh, by uh, leading us in prayer. So let's pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we ask that this day would bring Sabbath rest to our hearts and to our homes. May your image be restored in us. May the gravity of material things be lightened. May we know the grace to embrace our own finite smallness in the arms of your infinite greatness. And may your word feed us and your spirit lead us into this week and into the life to come. Amen. Well, can I invite you to stand? Uh, we're going to have this op these opening words as a call to worship. Then our musicians uh, will lead us in our opening song. I invite you to join in the two responses towards the end that are in bold type. So we meet in the presence of God who knows our needs, hears our cries, feels our pain, and heals our wounds. God is spirit. Let us worship him in spirit and truth. The Lord is with us. Let us praise his name forever. Well, we're going to do that uh, now as we stay standing. Take your seats. Don't we need to praise God uh, this morning? Uh, don't we need to declare his greatness aloud uh, to one another as we remind ourselves, lifting our eyes from our own world, our own situation, 
uh, to the greatness of God and to be reminded of his work uh, in our world today. Well, there's a number of things that are coming up in the service today. We're going to have the pleasure and privilege of celebrating um, our 30th wedding anniversary with um, uh, someone. We'll uh, come to that in, in just a moment. Uh, we have the final one of our talks from our series through uh, the book of John. And uh, Rob, our curate, is going to be uh, speaking to us later in the service on that. As we, well, we come to the end, but we've given it the title, The Beginning, as the end of the book propels us. Uh, into the beginning of the story of Jesus' disciples following uh, him as the risen king. Uh, as uh, usual throughout the summer, um, we've got uh, the activities for the uh, children at the back. Uh, so the tables are set up there with different things for you to do to help you to engage uh, with the um, material today. I think I've just... Uh, there we are. Let me just put it up on the screen. So that's what the children have to do. They've got a word search. Everyone loves a word search. There's a uh, the passage with blanks to fill in that they might like to do later, and there's even a, a, a lamb or a sheep to make, um, so you can ask the children to see uh, how they've got on uh, with that later. Well, let me also just mention, so perhaps just for the children, particularly at the back, uh, to, to let you know that if you've been doing your thank you boxes over the summer, and um, we hope you have, then if you bring them back either for the all-age service next week or the start of the rock the week after, then there will be chocolate buttons uh, for people who bring back uh, completed thank you boxes. And even better, if you've memorized one of the verses from the psalm of the summer, Psalm 136, um, if you've memorized one of them, then uh, that'd be even better. Just see Sarah, who leads the rock, and she will have chocolate buttons for those who have thank you boxes uh, to return. Well, if I can just mention a couple of other things uh, that are going on today and over the, the coming days. Um, today we have a um, local walk uh, after church. Um, we do these on the fourth Sunday of every month. It's a great opportunity to get to know people as we talk uh, and walk together. Um, today's one we're going to meet either at 11.20 in the church car park, or you can meet, I think we're going to head up the gullage. Is that, is that right? So you can meet at 11.30 down by the Felbridge tennis courts uh, if you wish to, and we'll pick you up on the way. And we're going to end up back here for a picnic. Um, so uh, if you uh, want to come on the walk and the picnic, great. If you just want to come back for the picnic, um, that's absolutely fine. I think it'll be around 1, 1 30 that we'll be back, be back for the picnic. Um, so come and join us for that uh, if you would like to. And there's also an opportunity uh, to come to church and have uh, lunch with people uh, tomorrow. We have one of our community lunches. We have four of them every year. And uh, there's one happening tomorrow at 12.30 in the church. This is really not meant to be just for us as church members to eat together, as great as that is. But it's an opportunity for us to invite people in our local area who we may know, uh, perhaps those who are feeling isolated at the moment, uh, to come and uh, sit around a table with the rest of us and enjoy lunch together. Diane Francis tells me there are still spaces, so uh, if you would like to come to our community lunch on uh, Bank Holiday Monday tomorrow, if you'd like to invite others to come, uh, let Diane know and she will uh, book you a place. And I think Luke is going to tell us about something else that's coming up this term, so... Um, over to you. Do you want to go straight with the video? Excellent. Um, uh, have a look at this. You might be a convinced atheist, a committed Christian, or somewhere in between. Perhaps you've lots of questions to ask, or perhaps you're happier just sitting and listening. Maybe you go to church, or maybe you've never been. Whoever you are, Christianity Explored is a place for you to explore what life is all about. The Christianity Explored course is free, it's relaxed and informal, and it's run by ordinary people local to you. Some courses are held in churches with lots of people. Some are held in people's houses with just a few friends getting together. Wherever you meet, in each session, there's a chance to look at the life of Jesus for yourself and ask any questions you have. There's a short video to watch, and then a chance to chat about what you've just heard. You'll meet great people, you won't be asked to sing or pray or read out loud, and you don't need to know anything about the Bible to enjoy it. So whoever you are, come and explore. There's almost certainly a Christianity Explored course starting near you soon. So ask a Christian friend, or check out the website to find out more. You might just discover that the Christian message really is the best news you've ever heard.
Well, thanks so much. Um, almost certainly a Christianity Explored course near you at some point. So uh, we're holding a Christianity Explored here in the church on Wednesday evening, starting at 7.30 from the 12th of October. I don't think I need to introduce it much more. I than to say uh, all of us, I think, if you scratch beneath the surface, are asking those big questions about life. And so um, particularly for friends, family, perhaps if you're here today or watching on the live stream and you want to get to know uh, what are the Christian answers to those questions, please come along. Uh, 12th of October, 7.30, meal here in church, and then we'll chat about those big things together. Brilliant. Thanks so much. Thank you, Luke. Uh, glad you mentioned that there's a meal part of it as well as we've already had chocolate buttons, uh, church picnic, uh, community lunch, and meals at Christianity Explored. So if you're feeling hungry, this is the place to be. Um, we're going to continue on that theme today, actually, because there is also cake after the service to celebrate Tony and Caroline's uh, 30th wedding anniversary. I'm going to invite them up to the front. They wanted to uh, give thanks to God um, among their church family and uh, have asked for us to pray for God's blessing on them as they, they celebrate. But have also agreed to be interviewed and just to answer uh, a few questions uh, for us this morning. So, uh, Tony, Caroline, come and join us uh, at the front. Brilliant. I'll give you that one. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, firstly, happy anniversary. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, it's today your 30th yes. wedding anniversary? Yes. Brilliant. Well, we're really pleased to be able to celebrate with you. Just first of all, tell us how long have you been at St. John's and uh, where do you live and what family do you have, if that's right? Yeah, we've um, actually been here seven years okay. next month. Yeah. Uh, we now live in Crawley Down. Mm-hmm. We started off up the road in Blindly Heath. And what was the other question? Sorry. Uh, good question. Uh, what a family. family. Do you have? Yeah. So yeah. We, I have um, a son, Daniel, who will be 40 in January, um, daughter, Stephanie, who is 36, and we have a daughter, um, Lucy, who was 29. So next year it's all the, the zeros 40, Fantastic. Tony will be 70, and my daughter will be 30, our daughter, youngest daughter. Fantastic, good, good. Well, listen, we, we, we love to celebrate marriages at St. John's, so I was so pleased when you said you wanted to celebrate your 30th anniversary uh, with us uh, together, and uh, I'm also pleased you're happy just to tell us a little bit about some of the joys and challenges that, um, that, that you've both experienced as we celebrate with us. So just first of all, tell us, what, why are you keen to publicly give thanks for the last uh, 30 years of marriage? I've got this so that I stay on track, because those of you who know me know I go off on many different tracks, so... Basically, I mean, God has just been so good to us during our 30 years of marriage, which actually is my second marriage. And being what's known as a blended family, with me bringing two children into our marriage, plus having one child together, has not been uh, without its many challenges and stresses. Um, But the reason that we can stand here and we want to stand here today still together is totally down to God's grace and faithfulness. We've faced so many difficulties and stresses in the past 32 years that we've known each other, we've been together, but God has brought us through each and every one. So we're massively thankful and grateful um, to him. Um, I know and appreciate that everyone goes through really, really tough times. Um, But I kind of think why struggle and sort of flounder on your own, trying to get through on your own, when actually you don't have to. We have this powerful and mighty God who is the only friend who will be and is always with us, carrying us, which is why I chose the footprints theme for our cake. It was then that I carried you, especially this last year. That has just been uh, so... Um, well, can, I, can I ask you a little bit about this last week? Because I know particularly um, recently um, there have been some uh, uh, challenges and struggles for you. Just, um, yes. Uh, do you want to sort of tell us a I little bit Tony's about this? I think Tony's going to, yes. I just wanted to struggles. just finish and say yeah, yeah. that it's an amazing thought that the creator of the whole universe loves us um, and cares so much about all the details of our lives. This is the other thing, um, the tiny and the massive ones and that we never need to feel or be alone. And I, I think that's really really important message because of what everyone's done here so i'll hand over to tony i mean even things like sorry even things like (laughs) parking spaces sorry (laughs) even things like parking spaces at the hospital when i was in when tony was in they've they've been there you know and yeah yes so um it has been a difficult year anyway um 
On the 15th of March, um, I had a heart attack, but I was very fortunate because it was at home, God's grace, and uh, the hospital sorted it all out, and uh, really, I was a ticking time bomb, what they told me, and there was all these stents and uh, flashes and uh, angiograms and all this, and uh, I'm brand new again, so... Uh, <laughs> That, funny enough, is the problem. Yeah, but, well, we, were, uh, we, we were praying for you a lot through that, and pray, know, praise God for very good. over yeah. you and how He's yes. brought you through. And we're at this point where we celebrate, um, yes. celebrate your marriage as you've reached this milestone. Yes. Carolyn, do you want to yes. share uh, sort of something further? Sorry, I just wanted to add that um, God's blessing and protection throughout the far, first half of this year, especially. I mean, through our lives, through our marriage, but especially six, seven months, the first of this year, have been so evident. And I think one thing I would say is that he hasn't and doesn't ask us to try and understand why it's been as it has. And I just know that he just simply wants us to trust him because he is the only one who knows the bigger picture, um, which I didn't always, you know, this has taken me a long time through this journey to, to understand. And I've been human. I've had times when I'm like, why, why? But um, what I can say is that he used me even in hospital, putting people in my path, whether it was staff, patients, um, visitors in conversations. Um, but also, I really know that my faith has grown and deepened uh, as I learned and understood that he, he knew. He knew what was going to happen. Uh, he knew what we were going through, every trial that was to come, and that we weren't ever in control of any of it. I think we all think, you know, that we are, but it just it came out of the blue so suddenly and, and unexpectedly, um, but has really... Um, made me realise that, that he is in control and thankfully always will be. Mm. Um, and that's really freeing and it's reassuring. Um, and it's just one reason for my deep love and, and gratitude um, to our awesome God, but also to our wonderful church family um, here who faithfully brought us before God every day. I have to mention Anne Butler, you've been amazing in getting out so many, because as you can imagine, I sent quite a few emails mm. every day. Um, <clears throat> And I just want to finish by saying how blessed and fortunate we are to be part of St. John's Church family. And again, to give thanks to all of you and for all of you. And of course, massively to God. Brilliant. He's amazing. Brilliant. Caroline, Tony, thank you so much for that testimony of God's goodness. Don't go anywhere yet because we want to pray for, uh, for you uh, after 30 years, giving thanks to God and pray for his continued blessing uh, on you both. So let me do that now. So. So we stand in your presence, O oh Lord, to give thanks for Tony and Caroline for 30 years of married life, and we rejoice together with them and ask for your blessing on them. May God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully grant you the riches of his grace that you may please him in both body and soul, and living together in faith and love may receive the blessings of eternal life. And Almighty God, through Jesus, you have made a covenant of grace with your people by the outpouring of your Spirit. We praise you for the gift of marriage that reflects your love for us. Living God, by the presence of your Holy Spirit, may Tony and Caroline know the risen Christ to be with them now as they celebrate this anniversary together. May their lives continue to be a witness to your saving love. And as you pour out your love, may they continue to grow together in your sight and each be to the other a companion in joy, a comfort in sorrow and a strength in need. And Lord, bring us all at last to that great wedding banquet of your Son in our home in heaven, where we will forever praise you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Tony and Caroline have very kindly bought cake for us to enjoy uh, together afterwards. And I think there's a cake for, for adults and cake for children that will be passed around uh, afterwards. Cake for all. Well, I thought it would be appropriate after that just to sing a more reflective song. Uh, we need to sing about God's goodness, don't we, after hearing all that Tony and Caroline have shared and given testimony to. One line of this next song, Good and Gracious King, says, I will give to you my burden as you give to me your strength. Uh, so let's uh, stand together as we sing. Bro. 
I'm going to lead us in a, a time uh, to pray now. Uh, I don't know about you, but right now at the moment, I find it really hard uh, watching, uh, reading, listening to the news. Uh, there's just uh, so much going on that makes it such a hard read. And uh, just one thing I've started to find really helpful is uh, uh, praying through stuff uh, as um, I hear it uh, or read it. And so we're going to do that uh, uh, this morning. Uh, and uh, you might find that helpful to do as well uh, over the coming weeks. But I'm going to put just on the screen four different headlines from the news uh, over the uh, last uh, week. And uh, we're going to pray through some of these things. If it's helpful fa for families around tables at the back as well to look at the headlines and the pictures and to be able to pray together uh, with your children uh, during this time, then please do that. Uh, but we're going to start uh, with uh, young people. Um, and particularly uh, these years whose uh, education has been hugely affected by the pandemic. Uh, with it being exam results season at the moment, we're going to pray for God's guidance. So dear Father, please guide our young people through these times. Lord, we ask with exam results having come out over the last couple of weeks, please guide those who have received the grades that they need and also those, they, those who haven't. And particularly, Lord, as they look ahead to this coming year and beyond and explore options and make plans for their future. Amen. So next headline, as we turn to the exploding uh, cost of living at the moment. So, Father, we thank you that petrol prices have come down a bit in recent weeks. Lord, but the cost of many other things, especially energy bills, are rising fast. Please help and provide for those who are no longer able to afford the basic necessities. And please show us as a church ways that we can help. Amen. And next we turn to the extreme climate that we're seeing at the moment in this country and in other parts of the world. Water levels in our country at record lows, but other parts of the world are experiencing flooding and underwater. So, dear Father, please give wisdom to politicians and water companies in this country as they make the necessary decisions for us to cope with more extremes in our weather. And particularly, Lord, we ask that you would bring rain in abundance in this coming season to help us through the current drought. But we pray too today for the nation of Pakistan, where they're experiencing widespread flooding, flooding, having had nine times the usual rainfall in August. Lord, please, with the help that is needed for that nation, get to the people who need it most. Amen. And then turning to the situation in U Ukraine, as there's no sign of a ceasefire and we continue to pray. And Lord, although the news headlines continue to be bleak for that part of the world, we know, Lord, you're a God who can work miracles. And so we ask that you would bring an end to this conflict. conflict. Lord, we pray against things escalating further. And we ask that people would soon be able to return to their homes and rebuild their lives. Amen. And I want us as well, just looking ahead to this coming term, to pray for ourselves as a church. So, dear Father, we ask for all that we will do in this coming term as a church. Lord, help us to be those who are encouraging the weak, reaching out to the lonely and lost, drawing alongside those who are struggling, calling back to you those who have turned away, and proclaiming the gospel to all, that more people would come to know the joy of your salvation. Amen. Well, I'm going to suggest now as we um, uh, bring our time of prayer to close that we use a, a prayer of uh, confession. Uh, the next song that we're going to sing is called Mighty, Mighty Saviour. And as we remember that Jesus is our Saviour, well, we also acknowledge that we are sinners who need a Saviour, that Jesus is just the Saviour that we need. So I'm going to put this uh, prayer uh, up on the screen. In fact, why don't we stand now and we'll pray this prayer together as we're standing and then we'll go straight in uh, to our next song as we proclaim Jesus, the mighty Saviour um, of us and the mighty saviour of the world. So let us now admit to God the sin which always confronts us, so together. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, Jesus is indeed our Saviour, and it's to him that we now sing. i 
someone to cleanse me. No one is pure. No one is righteous in your sight. I need someone to save me. I'm so glad you died and rose again. For helpless sinners like me. What a mighty, mighty Savior you are. What a mighty, mighty Savior you are. You can wash away my sin. You can change my heart within. What a mighty, mighty Savior you are. It is too strong. I need to conquer on my own. I need someone to help me. I am too weak. I cannot change my evil heart. I need someone to save me. I'm so glad you died. Blessed as I what a mighty, mighty Savior you are. What a mighty, mighty Savior you are. You can wash away my sin, you can change my heart with you. What a mighty, mighty Savior you are. What a again and this song is to lead us into our teaching and our Bible reading as we remind ourselves that God speaks as we open the Bible while we hear the very voice of God. God speaks, we listen. Let's sing. God speaks, we listen. Wanna hear his word every day? God speaks, listen, read the Bible, trust and obey. No better way to truly know God, no better way to truly know us, no better way to truly know life. Cause in the Bible we meet Jesus. God speaks, listen. Wanna hear His word every day? God speaks, listen. Read the Bible, trust and obey. No better way to truly know God. No better way to truly know us. No better way to truly know life. Cause in the Bible we meet Jesus. God speaks, listen. Well, Rob, do you want to uh, come and join me at the front? Everyone else, uh, take your seats and uh, grab your Bibles. Uh, Rob's going to uh, read um, today's uh, passage for us. Um, in just a moment, and uh, then he's going to speak uh, from that passage. It's the final passage uh, in the whole of John's book. I'm going to read the last bit. And uh, one thing that we do have at church is we have these little uncover books, which are uh, the book of John. And uh, if having uh, gone through this book and uh, read through it and taught through it in church, you'd like to go back and read it with a friend, well, this is a great way to do it. 
I found it a really, really useful and easy and helpful way uh, to read the Bible uh, with others. And uh, we have some copies of this available on our sort of book rack over on the side. Uh, so you're welcome to take those if you would like uh, to read them uh, through with a friend. And I will just say before Rob reads the passage that uh, kids on the tables at the back, this is the point you need to look at your activity sheets and find the bit with the passage and the missing words and see if you can fill in uh, the missing words as uh, Rob uh, reads it out uh, to us. Um, so I uh, do take up your Bibles, and uh, Rob, over to you. Thank you. So we're in 21. John 1, verse 15 to 25, and that is on page 1090. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, will you open our ears and our hearts to receive your word? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and said, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Because of this, the rumor spread among the believers that this disciple would not die. But Jesus did not say that he would not die. He only said, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? This is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. We know that his testimony is true. Jesus said many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A 14-year-old girl who I once knew commented on a dish that her dad had cooked the night before. I think they had an, an argument, or he was in a bad mood or something, I can't remember. Um, but he'd made spaghetti bolognese, and it was disappointing. She said, it wasn't made with love. It wasn't made with love. Do you find that when you, when you cook something without love, it just it doesn't taste right? Well, in a similar way, uh, our passage this morning helps us understand that we need to love Jesus before feeding his sheep. Perhaps you think this passage only applies to, to Peter or leaders in the church. Perhaps you're saying to yourself, well, of course I love Jesus. That's why I'm here this morning. I got out of bed to hear this. Well, there are two main points I want to highlight this morning. The first one is really a question that Jesus initially asks Peter, do you love me? And the second point is about feeding his flock, his people, his church. That's you and me. Now, I'm going to focus mainly on the first three verses. That's verse 15 to 17, because there's a lot going on here. Uh, it's full of surprises, and I hope you don't mind, but I'd like to reread these verses again before we get stuck in. So if we can just go back to the first three verses. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? 
Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm fascinated by the fact that Jesus could have just summed up these three verses in one line. He could have said, Peter, I know you love me, so feed my sheep. But he doesn't. Instead, there's a near identical repetition of a question from Jesus, an answer from Peter, and then a command from Jesus. So question, answer, command. There's a, there's a real focus, there's a close-up on Peter and Jesus in the company of the disciples. Imagine the scene, they've just had the best barbecue breakfast this side of Galilee. The water is gently kind of lapping on the shore, and they're still slightly in awe and wonder that the risen Jesus is sitting with them around the fire. Do you love me? At the end of this chapter and this book, Jesus asks Peter, do you love me? Note the shift of the theme from following to believing to knowing and loving. Themes that develop. We've seen that, haven't we, throughout John's Gospel. My hope is that when you leave church this morning, you're going to be clearer about your answer to Jesus' question and what this means for you. So do you love me? Jesus' question penetrates to the core of who Peter is. Look with me at the beginning of each question Jesus asks Peter in the first three verses. He says to Peter, Simon, son of John. Why does he do this? Simon, son of John. Well, this echoes back to when Jesus first called him. It goes to the core of who he is. There's a stripping back of who he is when Jesus asks this question. It's like Jesus asking the most reverend um, Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin, son of Anthony, do you love me? Or Her Royal Highness, Queen Elizabeth, Liz, daughter of George, do you love me? Here this morning, there might be a Mr. or a Mrs. or a Miss or a Ms. or a Doctor or a Professor or a JP or a QC, a reverend, a sister or a major, and many more. But when Jesus addresses us, he addresses the core of who we are. And Jesus knows how much Peter loves him. Jesus invites Peter to respond to the first question in a comparative way. Do you see this in verse 15? He says, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Remember, Peter can be really boastful uh, and really impulsive. So we kind of expect him to say, yes, Lord, of course I love you more than these. I love you to the moon and back. But instead... And here's the first surprise. Peter appeals to Jesus' knowledge of Peter's love. Look with me. He says, you know that I love you. This answer must meet Jesus' approval because he immediately commands Peter to feed my lambs. However little or much we love Jesus, he knows However young or old you are in your faith, however little or much you love Jesus, however able you are to express this love, no matter how much we remember this love for Jesus as we get older, no matter how much our faculties fail us, he knows how much you love him.
Now, knowing himself and knowing Jesus, how can Peter not love him? When Jesus asks Peter a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? We're told that Peter is hurt because Jesus asks him a third time. Wouldn't you be? But the hurt that Peter feels reflects the hurt that Peter caused when he denied being Jesus' disciple. Do you remember? Previously, when Peter was asked if he was one of Jesus' disciples, as he warmed himself by a different fire, he answered, I am not. I am not. I am not. Here, around this fire, Jesus is publicly reinstating and restoring Peter in front of the other disciples, giving him the opportunity to say, I love you, I love you, I love you. Now Peter, as we know, had many, many failings. He had a willing spirit, but a weak flesh. And yet Jesus, the Messiah, God's one and only Son, the Word made flesh, the Holy One of God and friend. He gave his life for Peter despite all these failings. Peter is expressing the deep inner sense of pardon and forgiveness for his sins. Well, it's a good job we're not like Peter, isn't it? You've never denied Jesus, have you? You've never said things you've regretted or made promises you've never kept? Surely not. I would like to do some, I'd like you to do something. Could you think of someone who you love or have loved? Do they know everything about you? The good bits, probably. The bad bits? All of the bad bits? The bits that come to mind right now, the ones that you'd rather not think about or remember? Do they know all things about you? Have they laid down their life for you? Knowing who we are and who he is, how can we not love him? So Peter loves Jesus. We might love Jesus. So what? Well, before we explore this, I just want to give a bit of background. The language that's being used here by Jesus. Well, this verse is the earlier chapters, especially chapter 10, when Jesus describes himself as the good shepherd. Do you remember that? The good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. Now, feeding and taking care of his sheep, this is primarily about God's word, speaking God's word to one another. In Matthew's gospel, Jesus puts it like this, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. So for pastors and leaders like Peter as under shepherds, this is primarily preaching, teaching, correcting, rebuking, and encouraging. But for all Christians, Well, this is just encouraging one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. Don't forget that we're all his sheep, all of us. We all need feeding and taking care of, even the Archbishop of Canterbury, even the Queen. Now, one of the things that I love about Jesus is the way that he he never asks you to do something without doing it first. Have you noticed that? He never asks you to do something unless he's done it first. Do you see what's happened in this last chapter? Having just fed his disciples, he commands Peter to feed his sheep. If, like Peter, you love Jesus, if you have this deep inner sense of the pardon and forgiveness for your sins, well, what difference does this make? What what does it look like? Well, I suggest one of the differences is this. It means that leaders in the church 
watch over God's flock, not because they have to, but because they're willing. Have you heard the story about the man, uh, sorry, about the mum who couldn't get her son to go to church? One Sunday, she called upstairs to her son, come on, it's time to get up. I don't want to, he said. Come on, son, it's time to get up and go to church, she said. I don't want to, he shouted back. And she said, but you're the vicar. (laughs) We all need to be fed. We all need to be encouraged. I need your encouragement. I need to hear the wonderful gospel truth. Will Will you encourage me? Brothers and sisters, I hope you do. It means that if you go to church and you're not fed the word of God, you should feel spiritually hungry by the time you get home. It's like going to McDonald's. No no matter how much you eat, you're just still hungry, aren't you? It means that it should bother you if you meet with a fellow Christian and all you talk about is TV and sport. It means the best meal you can serve a sister or brother in Christ is Christ. It means encouraging each other, like like the testimonies that Caroline and Tony have given given this morning, uh, or attending the safeguarding training in September, or going to Christianity Explored and helping out. There's so many things that we can do. There's, There's a walk after the service today, for example. And talking of walks, a good friend of mine, Ed, who I studied with at Theological College, He used to be great at feeding me and and many others. He was a terrible cook, but he was really gifted at prayer. He would often, we would often walk around together in the grounds of college, and um, he'd just say, should we pray? And I learned how to pray whilst walking, which sounds straightforward, and it is really providing you keep your eyes open. Um, But isn't it great to be prayed for? When we love Jesus and feed his sheep, there are some things that it doesn't mean. It doesn't mean that hospitality or meeting together or welcoming or listening or tackling fuel poverty or lots of other wonderful things that happen in church. It doesn't mean they don't have no value, but it means that they don't sustain you. They won't grow you or the church. In Peter's second letter, he puts it this way. We are to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are to grow. If all we feed each other is cake, and don't get me wrong, I will be at the front of that queue for Caroline's cake later on. If the only thing we feed each other is cake, the only things that are going to grow is our waistline. Remember, man shall not live on cake alone. It doesn't mean that we're to ignore the physical welfare needs of each other. Don't forget that Jesus has just fed his disciples. But it means that as we follow Jesus, these needs are always secondary to our spiritual health. And one final thing before we finish, before the book finishes. As Jesus tells Peter to follow me, If you look in verses 19 and 22, they walk down the beach together. There's a hint that John is already doing this. Do you see in verse 20? The disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. Then, like Google Earth, John zooms out from the shores of Galilee to the whole world. Even though this is the end of the book, it is finished. This marks a beginning. A new chapter for all of us as we, like Peter, look for the footsteps of Jesus. Will you continue to love him, follow him, and feed his sheep? Let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, 
Will you set our hearts on fire with love for you? Strengthen us and by your Spirit send us out, Lord, so that we can feed each other, take care of your people. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, Rob, thank you so much for helping us as we consider that last passage of John. We're going to have a chance to just um, allow some of those things we've thought about to sink in deep within us before we um, uh, end our service. We're going to sing a final song, There is a Redeemer, which encourages us. The Redeemer is talking about Jesus. Uh, But the verse says, Thank you, O my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. And that's what we're doing now with God's Spirit at work in us, uh, doing the work that he has called us to. Uh, of feeding his sheep. So let's stand uh, together and we'll sing. It's great to see uh, everyone here uh, this morning. Uh, please don't uh, rush off. Um, I can already see Caroline preparing uh, the cake um, for us. I think that's going to be passed around. I'll go and help myself at the back and, uh, as we uh, celebrate uh, this morning with uh, Tony and Caroline. And the uh, walk will be setting off in about uh, 20 minutes' time. Uh, so I hope there are people who are able to stay around and uh, join us for that. Rob just said uh, something at the end which I found really helpful as I think about this coming week. He just said, look for the footsteps of Jesus. And then as we go out, will we walk in his footsteps uh, as we follow him uh, along the way? Well, let's uh, close uh, with a a final prayer. We're actually going to use the Lord's Prayer as our closing prayer uh, this morning. I know it's one that uh, many of our children will be familiar with as well. Um, So we'll say these words uh, together uh, as we pray and head out from here. So let's pray. Our Father in heaven... Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen.